Hey guys, welcome back to Reading Your Bible in a Year. This is day 107, and if you've been following this series, then what you can tell is that some days I do like a summary of all that we read during that day, and other days I narrow in on more like one verse in particular. So that's what I'm actually going to do in today's reading. Today we've read various chapters of Psalms, but I want to narrow in at, at, at chapter 6. If you want to follow along with me in this series and read the whole Bible with me, then there's more information in the description, like a video playlist of all the videos I've made on this topic and the Bible plan that I'm actually reading. Without further ado, let's just read this psalm together and then kind of talk about the verse that I want to talk about. It says, Psalm 6, O Lord, don't rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your rage. Have compassion on me, Lord, for I am weak. Heal me, Lord, for my bones are in agony. I am sick at heart. How long, O Lord, until you restore me? Return, O Lord, and rescue me. Save me from your unfailing love. This is the verse I want you to listen to. For the dead do not remember you. Who can praise you from the grave? I am worn out from sobbing. All night I flood my bed with weeping, drenching it with my tears. My vision is blurred by grief. My eyes are worn out because of my enemies. Go away, all you who do evil. From the Lord, For the Lord has heard my weeping. The Lord has heard my plea. The Lord will answer my prayer. And may all my enemies be disgraced and terrified. May they suddenly turn back. In shame. So here we see David, the writer of this psalm, really struggling. Now remember, now remember, David is someone that has lived his entire life fighting battles and being in war. He's a warrior. And in fact, his kingdom, when he becomes king of it, is always attacked from every side. It even has a civil war from within. He just lives a very difficult, hard life for a king. And he writes this showing that he really did struggle with depression, which A means if you do struggle with depression, you can be a man after God's own heart and struggle with depression, just like David did. So let's look at verse 6, 5. For the dead do not remember you, who can praise you from the grave? And this verse is very important because... There's a big debate around hell, and it actually begins even before Christ. We see the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the biggest difference between them is that the Sadducees believed when you died, that was it, game over, in the grave, no heaven, no hell, nothing. So we have viewpoints like that, all the way to if you sneeze wrong, you're going to hell, to Oh, love wins and everyone goes to heaven, to purgatory. And there's all of these different viewpoints on hell. And why do I bring that up? It's because this from the grave, if you actually look in the footnotes, at least in my Bible, I'm reading the NLT, which I'll talk about here in a second. It says, Sheol. Sorry, Sheol. So Sheol is the place of the dead. It would mean kind of like all of hell. And why do I say that? Is because in the New Testament, Jesus is entering into this debate of heaven and hell and what happens. And he uses the word Gehenna a lot, which is a physical place in Jerusalem, actually outside the city. It was like a dumpster fire, quite literally. And that was what he referred to as hell. He said it was the place where the fire will never cease and the worm is never quenched. And then in Revelation, we get this viewpoint of the lake of fire, this lake of burning sulfur that people are thrown into. Now, Sheol would encompass all of it. There's also Hades. So Hades would be more like the place where people go when they're waiting for the dead. And this is where I think purgatory is wrong, is that a true biblical point of hell is that once you're thrown into hell or Sheol, there's no escape. And that's the first thing you need to realize is that there's no escape from this. And this is what David is saying here. Who can praise you from the dead? In Ecclesiastes, it talks about how there's no work in Shoel, in in hell. And then in Isaiah, it talks about the same concept that no one can praise you from hell. And remember, our entire purpose on earth is here to praise God. Go back to Genesis. God made us from the dust to replace Satan and to praise him. So, Hell is literally stripping you of your core spiritual 
purpose. And that is what David is talking about here. Now, I don't want to get into the minutiae debate on hell. There's a great book by Francis Chan called The Racing Hell that I really recommend you read. And it really dives into all the Greek and Hebrew and just making it really practical. But the thing that I want you to take away from this today is that hell will strip you of what you have been designed by God to do. And it's permanent and there's no escaping it. Unless your sin is paid for. Now, you can't pay for your own sin. The best metaphor I ever heard of about paying for your own sin or working your way to heaven was this. Imagine you're driving on the road and you're driving 54 miles per hour. And the cop pulls you over and he goes, do you know why I pulled you over today? And you go, no. And he says, you were driving 54 in a 55 mile per hour zone. I just want to write you a check for following the law. <laughs> That never will happen to you in your entire life because you're not rewarded for doing what is expected of you, like obeying the law. In the same way, we are not rewarded by not sinning. In a reward meaning that we are erasing our sins by not sinning anymore. So if you want to get into heaven, if you want to be a part of God's kingdom, if you want to avoid this grave that it's talking about in Psalm 10, Six, then first you must repent. The Bible says we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, then we will be saved. That's all I got for you guys today. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, then leave a thumbs up. And I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below about what we discussed here today. So see you back here tomorrow.